said that. Well, it's not exactly what. It's at the beginning, we were, we, we were not here, but since when are you here again? Oh, yeah, that's quite. Yeah. yeah. I know more about your living room than you probably want to because it's on the screen. But you didn't. <laughs> Thank you. Guys, there'll be two embargo sections to this. Uh, we can't take questions from everybody. We'll get around as many as we possibly can uh, for the time. So we'll kick off with Vinny for the first couple. Uh, Jürgen, we'll start with the injury news first. How's Joe Gomez? Uh, Fabinho, Virgil van Dijk and Mo Salah are likely a day to figure this weekend. In particular, Mo, given of course he's going up against Son in the race for the Golden Boot with just one goal separating the two. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure it's first of all well, good news. Yesterday we had one reassuring um, further scan. But the first thing was like we, 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 we thought, well, how, like he and we thought after the game, we were lucky. Um, it was a proper knock, but nothing happened. It's the leg where he was injured, so I understand 100% that everybody was a bit concerned. I was, until I saw Joey's face in the dressing room where he, I think most of the time we know best about our body. Um, the result of this scan is not not here yet, but we, 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 just, we don't expect anything really different. It was just reassuring that it's all fine. And from there we go. If it's fine, then, from, then it's about pain. How can how can you deal with pain and then we will see what what Joe can do today or tomorrow? But I don't know in a moment. With the other boys, it looks all good. Um, what we do with them for do with them for the weekend? I have no idea. Actually, I understand 100% the uh, what is it? Goal scoring, um, the battle with with Heming Son, but we I guess we have no chance that we take any risk. <laughs> um, but Mo don't doesn't want to take any risk. Uh, there's uh, no doubt no doubt about that. Um, but it looks good. But the boys, the boys make steps, and we will see. My, my preferred solution would be they, they all could play at the weekend, um, for um, for, um, for for rhythm reasons, stuff like this, or this could be on a bench, and we can bring them on or not. But that would involve. So that would be. But if not, then we take it uh, from there. So um, I cannot say it 100%. Obviously, I realise. First and foremost, in your mind, will be taking care of business yourself this weekend. Of course. But there's another element to it as well, because I know that Stephen Gerrard has spoken in the past of his disappointment in missing out on the title in 2014. So how much do you buy into any kind of romantic notion and the romantic side of football that he could go and get the result that ultimately hands you the title as well, if you take care of it? I, I can understand these kind of situations only by, by thinking myself in that role. So. If I would play a game and could help Dortmund, I could help Mainz, whatever. It would mean for me an extra motivation. That's how it is. But I don't play, and Stevie doesn't play. So that's a shame. And much more a shame that Stevie is not playing than that I'm not playing. But um, um, so, yeah, of course, I have this. I have. We are all human beings that have these kind of things, but there's no no real info that, that Stevie will take it 100% serious. I'm, I'm sure without me calling him or whatever, I don't have to. Probably the, the rest of the club did it already, and I, but I didn't. Um, I think a, a really good example, for example, how, how how motivated football teams are to fulfill their own targets is last night's game from Crystal Palace. So uh, Crystal Palace, wow. And there were a lot of people going everything. It was such an important game, one of the most important games for Everton in their history. And then Crystal Palace shows up there and plays incredible football. So, um, and yeah, they lost, but the, the effort they put in, and the, the, the passion they showed, and the, um, the, the whole game was, was, was really, from Crystal Palace, was really good. They lost, and oh, congratulations, by the way, to Everton um, for st staying in the league. Um, but that's a good example, just how football teams usually are. We play to win, and Aston Villa plays to win, and um, that's it. And it's a difficult place to go. It, uh, with cities like this, you know, if you don't go there and you don't play, you are not at one hundred percent. You get five or six <laughs> easily, and if you are fully, fully there, then you have a chance to get a result. How it always is in football. But this is the game I'm not concerned about and not thinking about at all, because um, if it's all the things we speak about, I speak already too long about that game, but um, it, it's completely disrespectful to, to Wilhelm Wanderers because they will do exactly the same. They don't come here and want to be part of our celebrations or stuff like this. Um, they come here and um, want to win and get three points, definitely, and we have to be ready for this game and not for the other one. And as 
you touched on on last night, and we've seen various celebrations this week as well with, with pitch invasions. I just wonder how worrying are they for managers, particularly when you're concerned about your own safety as well as the safety of the players. Uh, and is there a message for fans as to how to celebrate the right way? Oh, it's difficult because it's always the same. You cannot, you cannot uh, give a message, but how, um, how many? 83rd minute, we're on the pitch. I don't know when I saw fathers and sons um, with little sons on the pitch. I thought I, I'm not 100% sure what you are thinking. So that you lose your mind for yourself is okay, but you lose it for yourself and your son. I don't, I didn't get that because if the other thousands would have been there as well, that could have been really dangerous after the game. Um, I'm not sure how, how you can avoid that. I would. Um, it's it's really difficult. We. Um, to you know, someone really judge it and understand the emotions, but uh, um, it's for the um, for the uh, the players of the other team, especially, it's massively uncomfortable, and it should not be dangerous for them. So these are things that people cannot hold themselves back, like the guy, um, the two guys now, obviously in the last two games, yeah. They should for sure not be there. But I hope it's always like these two things happen now, and I really hope we learn from that. So it, it's it's not even, I'm not sure if it's a nice picture, but this, it's just like it is, and we should make sure that nothing, absolutely nothing, happens. People threaten themselves by jumping over whatever these kind of things. It's just so that these kind of things shouldn't happen. I think we can celebrate things without threatening ourselves and the opponent. I would say that should be possible, and um, yeah, we will see. Before we go to Juliet, uh, we'll go to one from uh, Israel. The, yes, that's okay. And then we'll go PLP. PLP, I have PLP. Yeah, yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was the food. Yes, two is fine. Yeah. Oh, okay. no, but yeah, is but Israel one yeah. for PLP two? I'm not yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sky goes through. Friday, 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 Friday. Two is PLP. Morning, Yuri. Good to see Hi. you. I was wondering how proud are you with, with the, um, the season, the journey that the players, yourself, the club, the staff have been through this year? Yeah, that's been tough, but it's been great. So it's absolutely a joy to be part of it. It's, um, it's uh, I mean, being part of this group is exceptional. I mean, the group. I mean, not only the players. I mean, actually, we, we are here in the building of the group, so it's it's insane. So with um, working together with these people is uh, is a pure joy. Um, and being where we are uh, is uh, is so is so rare that you can. Do something. You cannot plan it. I mean, imagine somebody tells you before the before the season we want to be part of, uh, we want to be in all of three cup finals and want to be um, want to fight for the league as well. And you would say, yeah, good luck with that. So it's abs it's actually not possible. But the boys did it, feed it literally and not literally by the by 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 the people here in the building, by our, by our supporters, by all these kind of things. So it's a fantastic time for a Liverpool supporter. And now we have to. Um, Make sure that we enjoy the last two games as well, and obviously, best of the most enjoyable thing in football is winning football games. That makes it all um, everything much easier. And um, so, there are two massive games to come. One now directly on Sunday, um, and we have to make sure that we are ready for that. In terms of Wolves this uh, this weekend, what did you make of their season in general, and what do you expect from them? From Wolves. Yeah, Wolves. Yeah, Wolves played an incredible season. Uh, I would say, really, I'm not sure if Bruno is 100% happy, but because I think they're for sure here and there, they, they, they dropped points were not necessary, so they could have fought even, I think, now the first week where they cannot fight for Europe anymore, right? Last week, if they would have won, there was a chance. So um, then, in a decisive moment, Bruno got obviously COVID, was not involved. Um, and I don't know him that well, but from the game we played, I know. I think I have a sense how competitive he is, um, and it must be horrible for him then to sit at home and see that it, that um, that he cannot do that. But it's always like this for the development of a team. It's always important the season and the end of the season as well, um, because you you work with that. So it's a something, and that's why I expect them extremely strong um, with the best possible lineup, uh, with a clear plan. Um, obviously, they didn't. Scored that many goals in the season, but they conceded pretty much none, um, and that's a, a really, a really special thing. And that's a way to build a team. Obviously, you have to be solid before you can be fancy, um, and um, that's what I did. And that's why I expect a lot from them next year. But a very difficult game, opponent for the weekend. Thank you very much. We'll see for sport one again. I'm sure <laughs> the side. Yes, Julia. Sorry. Um, yeah, then, so. When you won the Premier League title a few years ago, you said you would celebrate when the time was right. Um, you had the opportunity to, 
do that now, as well as the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup, um, and, and what else could come in, in, in the next week or so as well. So I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. Yeah. Oh, we have so many reasons to celebrate, to be honest. We've celebrated, like, um, so we don't know how many reasons, but we have already enough reasons. So I, I think already it's enough to, to celebrate life. Um, it's already enough reason. And then, of course, Carabao Cup, the FA Cup, um, and whatever will come. Um, and I know, and of course, that we didn't have the, the, the parade two years ago when we became champion is another, it's not the reason, but another reason I'm really happy that we can deliver uh, what I promised that time, and I said, whenever it's possible, we will have a parade. Now there's a parade, it's not. Um, so it's all about us, what we want to celebrate. It's not about what other people think, and I couldn't care less, but I know already about what, what people will say about it, really, um, all these kind of things. Um, but it's, it's really, it's just for us. It's just for Liverpool FC, for the people. It's just that we um, celebrate that we are together in this moment in time. And that's, for me, actually already enough to, to organize a parade <laughs> without any trophies. But we have already two, and let's see how many more we will have until then. But um, whatever happens on, on the 28th, the 29th will be a, this 29th will be a great day. Thank you, yeah. Carl from Merseyside, and then we'll go to Carl from Press Association. Hi, Jürgen. Hi. Um, you spoke about how, how the squad is playing as part of the season, and mentioned how um, <coughs> Takumi Minamino should be playing more, and that kind of thing as well. And then you know, there's already stuff written about some of these players might want to leave in the summer to get more game time. But are those kind of players you'd want to see leave because they're making your squad so strong, aren't they? I don't want to see anybody, anybody leave, but it's uh, that's life and that's uh, that's the situation. I have no idea. Nobody came to me and told me I want to go. No, no agent called me and said, yeah, if he's not playing more, we will see what happens. Honestly, that's not the time to think about it. But it's one hundred percent true. I said this. Whatever happens, this is what happened already. This is just possible because of the um, of the group we have. That's the only reason for it. We had the players. We had top class players, world class players in in, in moments when we had in the past not. I mean, we mixed up with kids. The kids were still played their part, which was absolutely, absolutely nice. And so we were lucky in moments. We had to come back against Leicester or whatever in, in cup competitions, um, these kind of things. So it was um, was a lot what happened in, in this past year. And of course, um, no. Again, I have no no idea who wants to go or whatever. And I, I I don't see that really. But if somebody comes around the corner and says, "I have a club where I would love to go." And it's not the normal thing, what always happens. Then the other club has to make an offer because as long as the boys are here, um, um, yeah, we have to agree as well. And that's how it is. But it's not the mo really not the moment. It's a moment where we, where we need to focus, where we need to 100% um, keep everybody in line, which is not a problem actually, um, for these last two games, for the last game on, on uh, Premier League game on Sunday, which is a massive one, and um, then for the other one as well. Carl, Carl from Press Association, I'm going to finish with Neil from the Open before we go to the first breakout. Yes, Carl. Just wonder, did, uh, did you realise you were almost quoting lines from your song there and you sort of like delivered what you promised you said? Were you talking to Julia? Oh, that was not on purpose. <laughs> but maybe I heard it that often. <laughs> that would be really embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I can sing it. Do you want? No, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Carl, it's a serious press card. No. I could. Yeah, thank you. Just on your Ferraris in the garage that you spoke about in the week, I'm just wondering how easy for you to part those Ferraris again when it comes to the next couple of games. The boys. The boys bought completely in in this in this project this year. Definitely, one hundred percent. The boys accept the decisions. The boys. That's what I say. That's why they they play like they play. Um, and so I have to make decisions in the end. And that's what I did the whole season. And now the boys. Now they would start arguing, moaning, whatever. It will never happen and will not happen um, for sure. Not this year. And that's that. That what that made it happen. That's why we are where we are. So, no, I have to make sports decisions and uh, the rest we deal with each other in a, in a specific way and obviously we have a lot of respect for each other um, and like each other and we, we, everybody bought in. We want to be as successful as possible and um, I have to make a few decisions and that's it. Okay, thank you.
we finally only have one question and we've got the right now. Yeah, you obviously said you don't want anyone to leave, but there's some players who contract to are up in the summer, so potentially Sunday could be the last time Anfield gets the season. Would you would you encourage a league Milner that the fans give them a, a special sort of ovation for people for the we, we, we can only do that with with with, uh, with a few. We, we know it definitely, and I don't. I think that's only diff, right? Yes. So, yes, I expect diff to get a special reception or, or farewell or whatever he is, um, and will be for me forever uh, a Liverpool legend, one of the most important players I ever had. Um, that sounds completely strange with the amount of games he had, um, but it was, uh, it is, and was a pure joy. Uh, um, to, to work together with him, so it's not over yet. So just because it's now the last Premier League game, and yes, he deserves all good thoughts we we can generate somehow um, for his future. And wherever he will go, he will um, he will be successful 100%. He's an outstanding player, outstanding boy. Um, everybody in the team loves him because he is just a relaxed guy and um, a really lovable guy. So um, yeah, that will be a a harsh moment when he actually leaves. It will not for us not be now, but um, whenever it will be, uh, it will be hard. But because since I'm here, Diff is here. So, <laughs> and uh, I, I remember so many things when I think about Diff. That's incredible. So important goals, injuries, bad injuries, where, and all these kind of things. So ups and downs, and um, yeah, he is a Liverpool legend, no doubt. Right, first embargo is 10.30 p.m. tonight, Friday the 20th, 10.30 Hey guys, thanks for checking out that video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you want even more Liverpool goodness in your lives, head on over to redmenplus.com now and sign up to Redmen Plus. We've got interviews, features, documentaries, as well as our vast array of weekly shows. So yeah, redmenplus.com. Sign up to Redmen Plus now.